Is AI going to increase inequality? The IMF thinks so. Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief Headlines Edition, all the daily AI headline news you need in around five minutes. Today we kick off with a warning from the International Monetary Fund over the potential that AI will increase inequality. This is from a new report from the IMF published Monday, June 17th, that basically said that the IMF had what they called profound concerns about significant labor disruptions and rising inequality. What's more, it pointed out that unlike previous disruptive technologies, AI was coming not just for blue-collar jobs, but for higher-skilled occupations as well. While acknowledging that generative AI held significant potential to boost productivity and even advance the delivery of public services, it was also, they believed, going to cause some big problems. So what were the suggested remediations? Some of them were things like improving unemployment insurance, but a big focus was on policies around education and training. From the Financial Times, in its report, the IMF said that policies on education and training needed to adapt to new realities to help prepare workers for a rapidly changing job market in the future, with a greater focus on offering lifelong learning. Sector-based training, apprenticeships, and reskilling programs could play a greater role in helping workers with the transition to new tasks and sectors. Said Era Dablinoris, deputy director of the IMF's Fiscal Affairs Department and co-author of the report, Quote, the transition could be painful for workers, and older workers may not have the skills that are needed in the age of AI, and it may require more time than in the past to acquire those new skills. We want people to be able to benefit more broadly from the potential that this technology holds, and we want to ensure that there are opportunities created for people. Obviously, it will come as a surprise to none of you, given the fact that I've chosen to spend all my time on Super Intelligent, a scalable platform to help educate the world on how to use AI, that I also think that a big part of the answer to this question is in education. Next up, we move over to NATO. Something you might not know is that NATO has a $1.1 billion innovation fund, the NIF. This fund was unveiled back in summer 2022, a couple months after the Russian invasion of Ukraine. One of the stated goals of the fund was to invest in technologies that could enhance NATO's defenses. The fund is currently backed by 24 of NATO's 32 member states. Earlier today, on Tuesday, June 18th, the NATO Innovation Fund announced that it had invested in four European tech companies, including Fractal, which Reuters described as a London-based computer chipmaker aiming to make LLMs like those that power ChatGPT run faster, Germany's ARX Robotics, which is an unmanned robotics company, iComat, which makes lighter materials for vehicles, and SpaceForge, a company that uses specific conditions of space, including microgravity and vacuum conditions, to build semiconductors in orbit. So there you have it. One of the biggest military alliances in the world is officially investing in AI. Speaking of interesting collaborations, OpenAI has continued to expand its footprint in the healthcare space, teaming up with Color Health on a new cancer co-pilot. Color was founded as a genetics testing company back in 2013 and has developed an AI assistant using the GPT-40 model. According to the Wall Street Journal, quote, the co-pilot helps doctors create cancer screening plans as well as pre-treatment plans for people who have been diagnosed with cancer. Said Othman Laraki, the co-founder and CEO of Color, the co-pilot is intended to assist doctors, not replace them. Indeed, the use of that term copilot is meant to reference engineering copilots that are augmenting software engineers rather than replacing them. This is not the first time that OpenAI has done a deal with a company in the health space. Back in April, for example, they announced a deal with Moderna, where that company would use AI to speed up business processes such as selecting optimal doses for clinical trials. And Brad Lightcap, OpenAI COO, said, We see a perfect fit for AI technology because they can help bring relevant information to the surface faster. They can give clinicians more tools to understand medical records, to understand data, to understand labs and diagnostics. We spent a lot of time on this show and in the media in general talking about the impact of AI on creative industries, entertainment. But in more heavy science-based industries, there is a ton of interest and excitement happening there that could lead to some incredible benefits from artificial intelligence. Finally, just to make it clear once again how hot the AI agent or AI assistant space is, U.com is raising $50 million to get into that space. U.com had previously been positioned as an AI-infused search engine, but as all search engines have started to AIify themselves, they've started to move more directly in this AI assistant space. Reuters writes, U.com's 11 million visitors in May reflected a year-to-date rise in web traffic, but the number was still below its 20 million peak in February 2023. Its app downloads have decreased an estimated 69% so far in 2024. Against this backdrop, the company has morphed U.com into an AI assistant, one that is focused on productivity as well as internet search. Lots and lots of activity in this AI assistant space, but also tons of competition, something we will continue to keep an eye on here at the AI Daily Brief. However, for now, that is going to do it for the headlines. Up next, the main episode. 